Hi, my name is Elizabeth Cohen. I'm an assistant professor of communication studies uh, at West Virginia University, and I'm going to be your instructor for this online section of COM 309, Health Communication. Welcome. Um, today, I just wanted to start off by kind of walking through the syllabus. Um, each week, I will be posting, um, I call them summary lectures, because I really can't cover all of the material on a YouTube video. Um, there's just not enough room. Uh, so you'll be getting videos like this every week, but normally I'll be talking about course content. Today though I just wanted to sort of run through some of the highlights of the syllabus, the things that I think are most important at least, because um, sometimes I think it's better to, to, to hear things in addition to reading them. Um, okay so first of all this is health communication and this is an online course. Um, we're going to be covering pretty much all major aspects of the field of health communication that I can think about. We're going to be talking about some interpersonal issues and then because it's what I like to study the most, um, it's what I do my research in, um, we'll be talking a lot about also um, the role of mass communication and different types of health outcomes um, and technology actually. Oh, I should mention by the way, this is, um, I won't always be broadcasting from home, but this is Ada. Sometimes she'll be there. Hey, Puggy! Show her your cute face. Look! get to the people in the club. Oh, no, 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 don't bark. Sorry. Um, there's also this guy. Oh, boy. Here he comes. I might have to put him up. Watson. Oh. Hey, there you go. Oh. Sometimes, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. There they are. There they are together. Okay. Um, my dogs will sometimes be here um, in the lectures, too, and I will try to make sure that they're not too distracting. Um, but I might have to pause occasionally and make them shut up and then come back. Anyway. Okay, so uh, this is health communication, and I will be doing these little videos um, to help you out with the content. Um, you do need to buy a book for this course. Um, in fact, I would say this is super important, more important than most of the classes I teach because it is an online course. And um, really, aside from my summary lectures, this is the only way for you to get the content. The nice thing about this book, though, um, is that you can purchase it on um, on a rental basis, I'm pretty sure. Um, check that out. Um, but it, it, it shouldn't be too expensive, but you can rent it too just for the semester if you want. I think it also has a digital version and a um, text version depending on what you prefer. Um, but this is a Wright, Sparks, um, and O'Hare Health Communication in the 21st Century, the second edition. And um, yeah, I, 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 it's really for the most part, we're going to be doing most of the work out of this book. Um, later in the semester, there's going to be some other readings. Um, there'll be one or two weeks that we actually don't cover anything in the book. and um, I'm just going to give you some articles, like one of them on Jenny McCarthy, um, that I want you to read uh, independent of the book, but most of the time we'll be reading from that. Any other articles will be posted on eCampus. Really, everything's going to be on eCampus. Um, which brings me to um, the other point I want to bring up, which is that um, because this is an online class, it really is imperative that you have regular access to the internet. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be daily, but I would certainly recommend that you try to make checking um, eCampus for information about this course a daily activity. Um, if there are any announcements, if there are any changes, I'm going to be posting it there. Also, um, we're going to be having discussions that you're going to need to keep up with. Um, so really, I would try to figure out a time in your day that you could, you know, have um, on a routine basis to sort of log in and check what's going on with the course. Um, even though this isn't the type of course that's necessarily going to require you to do something each day, you want to um, make sure that you have access to the internet um, daily just so you can kind of check in and see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> Okay. Um, the pace of this course, of course, is, it's what, you know, I have on the syllabus kind of a vocabulary word because I'm a tech geek. Um, it's an asynchronous course, which means that, you know, you can do it at your own pace for the most part. Sometimes I won't post different assignments until a certain time, but besides that, you can log in and do all your work at 3 a.m. It's not like you have to come to a class at some assigned time, and we aren't going to ever have um, things that everybody has to come in for at the same time. So, it's on your own time. I do want to say though, one of the challenges with that is that you really have to be self-motivated. You have to um, be willing to, um, you know, hold by your own schedules and keep to um, 
all of the assigned tasks sort of keep up with your own calendar um, because there's only so much I can do. I'll be posting reminders and things on eCampus about things that you um, have to do, but it's going to be very different than if you were in a um, in-person class where we would see each other two days a week and I and I could remind you and I could push you and things like that. Um, so there's sort of pluses and minuses um, to, to this format. Um, one of the downsides I would say is that I feel like it's harder for you to reach out to me, and I wish I could eliminate that barrier a little bit. Um, all I can say is, is that it is on you, but I'll, I'll constantly remind you that if you need me, I want you to come and seek me out. Um, email is definitely the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, please email my WVU account. There's actually two of them. Don't worry, they go to the same place. One of them is elizabeth.cohen at mail.wvu.edu, and the other one is elcohen at mail.edu dot wvu dot edu. Um, don't worry about this. It's all in the syllabus. You don't have to write this down. I know I'm talking fast, but um, please email me. We can also set up Skype meetings because this is an online course. I don't really have like office hours, right? Um, but anytime you actually want to meet and, and sort of have a dialogue where I look like this, maybe I'll actually most of my lectures, I should say, will probably be my office and I'd probably meet with you with the background of my office, but it could be in my pajamas. That's not unheard of. Um, <laughs> it's actually really not unheard of for um, uh, the types of things I do for my online classes. So um, whatever. I mean, I mean, we can be, um, I can be flexible around your schedule. I can meet with you with, with you when I'm at home or at work or whatever, but if you're having issues and you want to Skype, if you want to uh, set up a time to talk on the phone, we can do all of those things. Um, or if you, again, if you just want to reach out and send an email, I, I, I can't emphasize enough that um, it's really vital that, that you take me up on that if you think you need it because, um, again, because we're not meeting in person, I think it's a little bit harder for me to get the types of feedback on how you're doing and know um, how I can help you. So the best the best thing for me would be you telling me, right, um, and, and you reaching out and contacting me. So I'd appreciate that. Um, if I want to contact you, as I have down on here, um, I will probably just be putting announcements on eCampus most of the time. Occasionally Occasionally, in like crazy circumstances where something weird happens, um, I might send out um, a, a mass email through eCampus to people's Mix accounts. Um, I'll always be emailing your Mix account if I ever send an email, but I actually hate emailing you guys. Um, I don't like blasting people's email boxes, and I just figure that for the most part, if I put things on eCampus, then you can check it on your own time when you're ready. So. Um, just make sure, again, if you can get into eCampus once a day, that's really the best policy I can think of you, for you to do. Um, okay, so um, I have, um, you can see on this page of the syllabus, I have um, all your grades laid out with all the different assignments. Um, a syllabus quiz. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to talk about everything in this little video, but um, I, I really need you to read everything in the syllabus, and then there's a little bit of a quiz that I need you to take this week that's worth five points. And um, it's 10 questions, and you'll go on eCampus, and it's actually pretty good practice because it's the same format that your weekly quizzes. You're going to be qu getting quiz quizzes each week on material from your book. Um, it's going to be the same type of format. Um, and you can get um, a, a perfect score on the syllabus quiz even if you get some questions wrong because I have it set, at least with this quiz, that you can take it as many times as you need until you get the correct answers because the whole goal is I want to make sure that you understand all of the content in the syllabus. Um, this is probably going to be only up for like a week and a half or two weeks um, so we can give people some time to drop ad. So please don't forget to do that. Um, have your syllabus with you and then I would open up the quiz and kind of go through it and find the answers to the questions. I think that's a good way to do it. Okay, the other component is, um, as I just mentioned, you're going to be having these weekly quizzes in class um, every week at Sunday. On Sunday, probably 11.59, uh, if I can set it that way. Um, you'll have um, three questions um, that are rooted in the material in your book. Um, occasionally, also some of the summary lecture that I'll be posting. And um, you'll need to answer these closed-ended questions and it's worth three points, um, I'm sorry, six points each. The, there's three questions and um, each question is always going to be worth two points. I usually on these quizzes will set it so that you can do it twice so that if you um, don't get all the questions right the first time, kind of like the syllabus quiz, you can do it again, but I cap it at two. So make sure you get it right the second time. I want you to learn from your mistakes. Um, again, you're going to want to have your textbook open while you're doing this so that you can find the answers. Um, and, and the hope is also that, again, even if you've read the chapter, this will just sort of reinforce some of the ideas that you've learned. Um, we also, during the semester, will have um, about eight discussion board posts, which will be 
it works out to about every two weeks. Um, there's going to be, if you go on eCampus and you go under the discussions portion of it, um, what will happen is, is um, I'll open a forum and, and I call them conversation starters. Where what I'll do is, is I'll post a, um, I'll post a little, uh, question or some food for thought or an example um, and I'll usually ask you to talk about some specific thing and this is really important um, you don't have to necessarily address that specific question what I'm looking for is a dialogue is a conversation um, what I what I'm hoping is that somebody will post somebody will post their opinion and somebody will not necessarily respond to my question but they'll maybe respond to the first person who posted on it um, their opinion or something and and if we it, it goes off in um, a little bit of a tangent I don't mind I actually think that's great however um, what I'm really looking forward to, for in these discussions I would have to narrow it down to two specific things um, one is I want us to be talking about the concepts in the course. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't bring in personal examples. I love personal examples. But if you bring in a personal example, I'm going to want you to sort of explain to the class how this connects with the readings because I want you guys to kind of help each other out understanding different applications of what we're covering in the course, okay? So one of the things I'm going to be looking for is um, again, those connections to the reading. Um, and as I mentioned before, I also want this to be a conversation, so it's going to require um, active participation on um, everybody's part. Um, people usually start off pretty strong in this area, but then it kind of flakes at the end of the semester and I have to push everybody again. I want you to respond to each other. Um, I don't want you to just um, come in, I, I say sort of like post and fly or post and run, um, where you just come in, you check your um, discussion on Friday, and, and you come in and leave a post like, oh, that's a good idea. Bye. You know, and, and then we don't hear anything from you. I want substantive posts that are um, giving some sort of critical insight into the things that we're talking about, or um, offering some sort of like new perspective. But I also want it to be engaged. I want you guys to connect with each other and be responding to each other. Um, so you do not, by the way, have to come in and everybody has creates a different thread on the same discussion. Um, we could, I would, the things I like the most is when I see one really long discussion thread where people are going back and forth with each other. Um, this also means though that if the discussions close on Sunday, which they do, you need to have, I'll, I'll probably post the discussion, um, I'll probably post the starter conversation starter on Monday and then you'll have until Sunday to do it. Um, what that means is that you need to be checking this earlier in the week. If you just come in on Sunday and leave one comment, right, you've kind of missed the whole conversation. So this is the type of thing you need to be doing throughout the week in order to really be engaged with the discussions. Um, Okay, so we got quizzes, syllabus quizzes. Okay, um, and the other assignments that you're going to have in this course are um, mini papers and exams. Uh, let me talk about the exams first. At the end of each unit, there's kind of three units, um, and each unit consists of like a like four or five chapters that we're going to cover. You'll have an exam. The exam is going to be open book, open note. It's actually going to be a lot like your reading quizzes, except much longer, and maybe different types of questions, but most of them will be close-ended. But it'll be the type of thing that you complete on eCampus. Um, I don't make my exams timed or anything like that. It's open book, open note, but, you know, having said that, obviously if I, I'm letting you use your book, it's because I really want you to think about these questions. So you're going to want to give yourself some time to complete the exams. Um, you'll probably have about a week from the time I post the exam to, and, until you um, can actually finish it. Um, and then the week following um, is where there's a little bit of a, a writing component. Um, I want you to do these mini papers and there's details about the mini papers um, in your syllabus also on eCampus where the assignment is. Um, you can see right here, yeah, mini paper number one, mini paper number two. And this is just a time when I want you to apply all the things or not all the things, but as many things as you can from the readings to some sort of specific example. The first one I know is, is an example of your own life about some sort of medical encounter you've had um, or that you know of. Maybe somebody in your family had, that would be fine too. Um, but again, you should think about this as kind of an exam, just like the discussions. I love personal experiences, but the whole point is to show that you can apply your experiences to the material. Uh, so the more concepts that you can integrate into your mini paper, the better you're going to do. Um, again, think about the mini papers as a written exam. Um, but you know, not I'm, I'm not giving you a specific question and testing you. You can use your book and all that stuff, but. Um, 
that, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So think about the mini papers as, as uh, written exams that give you an opportunity to apply concepts in the textbook or from the from our discussions or from the um, from the little summary lectures that I leave uh, to a particular topic. Um, now here's the, the bad news. Um, <laughs> some people do find this assignment really difficult and they don't always do as good as they want on the first try because um, they still don't really understand what I'm looking for. Um, I'll say it again, I really, really want you to apply concepts from the course. Um, but sometimes maybe they'll apply one concept, but that's not good enough and they won't get the grade they want or whatever. Um, so what I've done uh, this semester is I've decided that what I'll do is, is I'll drop your lowest grade. Um, there are three mini papers assigned and um, with whatever your lowest grade is on those mini papers, I'll just drop it. Now what that means is, is that technically you can, you only need to do two because if you don't turn in one of your mini papers, um, you'll just get a zero, but I'll drop that zero at the end of the semester so it's not that bad. You can see on the grade calculation that, um, yeah, the, you basically like in the rubric, I can't, just, good idea to staple your syllabus so this doesn't happen to you, oh my goodness. Well, whatever, oh, yeah, here it is. Um, you can see the, the where it says um, mini papers. It, there are two mini papers worth 35 points that I'm grading you on, but I've assigned three. Um, so you can do up to three and I'll just take the highest of your two grades. Um, another, what some people do, I've done this in another class before, and, and a lot of people will just do the first two mini papers and if they're happy with both grades, then they just won't do the third and that's fine with me too. But, you know, um, it I mean, that's a much better approach, I think, than not doing the first one um, and then realizing with the second one that you're not, you know, maybe doing them um, in, in the way that I'm asking or something like that. So um, keep that in mind. Whatever strategy you want to do is fine. If you want to do all three, that's great. Um, again, I'll just, but I, no matter what, I'm just going to take the highest of um, your two grades. So, um, okay. Um, okay, I think that covers all the assignments. Um, Everything else I think is, pr I'm, I'm going to let you read the course policies on your own. The only thing I want to kind of highlight is um, last semester eCampus had a lot of issues and I want you to always know that if eCampus has some sort of issue, I'm very, very sensitive to that. It affects me too. And so I don't want you to freak out about it. What happens when we have some sort of tech outage is that we wait and then we see what the damage is and then I'll send an email or really an announcement on eCampus and I'll say, oh, okay, since um, you couldn't turn in your assignment because eCampus was down, here's what you need to do now, okay? Please don't worry. Um, I, I'm very, very, very understanding about how difficult all these technological issues are. Um, having said that, though, I, I also want to point out that with pretty much every assignment, right, you, you're going to have at least a week to complete it. And um, because of that... Um, I really, you know, late assignments aren't really relevant for this course because it's kind of like either, you know, you, you do them during that week or you don't. Um, and um, it, because, again, it's not like there's a small window to complete um, these things. Um, also, um, you know, I'm, I am going to be less sympathetic when you're turning things in at the last m minute. Um, <clears throat> about different things that go wrong. Um, although I will say that, you know, one of the sort of challenges I have in teaching this class is we have, um, thank goodness, a lot of non-traditional students in this class, you know, not not your typical undergrad. We have people with real life experience, which I think really enriches things. And they also have like real lives, you know, like um, they, they've, um, a lot of your classmates you'll see uh, are working several jobs and they have families and um, uh, very rich lives right outside of this class and I understand that. Um, so what I've tried to do is make all of the deadlines on Sunday night so that way those of you that really only have time on the weekend um, to, to get things done um, can do it. But I need you to keep in mind that Sunday's really a rough time to get things done um, because tech support um, usually does eCampus maintenance on Sunday morning, so just keep that in mind. And um, I don't know what their availability is if you need some sort of help. So I, I guess what I'm trying to like, I know I'm like kind of hedging around these issues is um, I want to be accommodating to all of the different challenges that you have in your life. But um, 
So, so that's why I've made the Sunday deadline. But even though I did that, it, I, I'm going to strongly recommend that, again, you don't wait to do all of these things until Sunday, whether it's the discussion boards or the um, quizzes. I would consider that kind of a buffer. I think ideally it would be good if um, you could find some time during the week to um, post your discussion posts and, and um, get your quizzes and then sort of have Saturday and Sunday as... Um, emergency time to get things done. Um, my fear is, is that if you sort of wait until the last minute to do things, then some crazy things can happen or you'll forget or things like that. So um, that's some very unsolicited advice, but I guess I'm a teacher, so I, that's, I give a lot of unsolicited advice. But um, anyway, I'm sorry. That was like really bizarre and awkward. I actually should warn you, um, <laughs> A lot of, I'm actually really embarrassed of um, the YouTube videos that I do online, the summary lectures. I say um a lot when I'm thinking. I tend to be one of these people where my mind is working a lot quicker than my mouth. So what comes out of my mouth is very garbled and, and messed up a lot of the time. Um, and I really apologize for that. Uh, I think actually I'm, I'm, I like to think that I'm a lot better in person where I have more time to clarify things and, and stuff like that. But um, anyway, I apologize. I do, however, <laughs> even though I hate them, um, I do think that the summary lectures are really helpful. Uh, you get to see my perspective on things and it gives you a lot of insight into things that I might want to test you on and how I see um, different issues. So if you can kind of get past my awkwardness in these videos, I really do think they'll be helpful. Um, most of the videos, I should warn you, I, I did last semester. And if I can reuse them, if they worked last semester, then I want to reuse them. Some of them, though, will be, um, I'll be redoing them either because the content's changed or because it was just too embarrassing and I can't do it. So, um, so that's the story with that. Um, I, I, I think that covers all the main components, but again, um, please make sure that you, um, please make sure that you spend some time reviewing the syllabus yourself and don't forget about taking that syllabus quiz on eCampus. And this week, um, we're really not going to be doing reading quizzes and uh, I'm not going to have a, a traditional uh, conversation starter on uh, the discussion board. However, I am going to want you to introduce yourself on eCampus. So on the discussion board this week, instead of talking about the content, I just want you to talk about you and I want to get to know you. Um, anything you can tell us uh, about yourselves to um, make us remember you and, 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 and uh, just give us some sort of insight into the type of person you are would be fantastic. Also, you don't have to do this, but um, I really love it when people um, go and edit their profile on eCampus and post like a, a some sort of um, picture. I have a picture of myself um, as my little profile picture. Um, but you could also, if you wanted to just use an avatar or something like that, that would be great too. Um, but please, you know, update your profile. Um, at the same time, because that'll help us as we're um, trying to keep track of who's saying what in the discussion boards and things like that. It just helps us get to know you in an environment that's harder to get to know you. And I really am looking forward to getting to know you. Um, I, I found that um, these discussions, you know, are kind of the, the the better part of the class because it's where we can really engage with each other instead of just like reading a textbook. Though it's a very good textbook. You'll help me hear me compliment it quite a bit over the semester. But um, anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, I hope that in addition to seeing you um, in, you know, interacting with the course content that we'll have some opportunity to talk individually if you need to. Um, so please don't forget to contact me if you need anything. And um, I'm looking forward to a great semester. Thank you so much. And let me know if you have any questions. Bye.